to um, the definitions of clean fill and managed fill. Um, technical issue, but um, the experts in this area, and this mainly applies to clean fill sites and uh, way, uh, other waste management sites. Um, just in the um, definition from the panel, we've identified an issue, and our preference is to go back to the council's definition, which has a, a, a very a clear difference between managed fill and <coughs> clean fill, and different standards applying to the two. Right. Um, move. Would you like to move, Councillor John Watson, and seconded, Councillor Mike Lee? I don't think you've seconded Bill. much, so you can. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I'm trying to spread it around here. Bill, Bill has done a lot today, actually. Um, right, so uh, that's moved and seconded. Um, is there any comment? It relates Cathy? to the health and safety aspect on part, in section five, so. Thank you, Councillor Mike. Um, <laughs> Councillor Cathy, no, you're done. Uh, any, anyone else? No, then I'll move that. All those in favour say aye. 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 It's against passed, I'll move the wrap up. Is there a seconder? Councillor Bill, all those in favour say aye. Aye. Against passed. Uh, item 041, Earthworks and Minerals. Um, the Earthworks, the only uh, real issue that we've picked up here uh, relates to uh, Kauri dieback and provisions that were in the entry plan relating to uh, the transportation of soils uh, in particular areas uh, that may I'll result second. in the spread of Kauri dieback. So we've, the panel has uh, recommended deleting that provision and um, we are recommending that that provision is put back in in relation to earthworks and the transportation of soil that may spread cowrie dieback. Right, we still see it. It's Councillor Linda, Councillor Ross. Uh, any question, comments? I, I believe there's some work by Mr Randall in this field. Simon. Good to see you, Simon. Uh, right, I'll move that. All those in favour say aye. aye. It's against passed. I'll move the wrap up. Uh, Councillor Linda, will you second that? Yes, right. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Right, so against past. Uh, topic 042, infrastructure. Yes. Yeah, sorry, we're on page 71 of the white papers. Well, I got page 71. Okay, in terms of um, topic 042, oh, right. infrastructure, yeah. there is one aspect of um, the first resolution, which is B, the air quality transport corridor separation overlay that you've already dealt with in the first day. So I just recommend we remove B for this conversation so as not to confuse B. everybody. B, out. So in terms of um, the first issue, it's to do with the deletion of the Highland Transport Noise Overlay and Associated Provision. This was an overlay that was applied to land adjoining oh, right. <coughs> major roads and rail lines and basically it was to require new or, or altered activities to provide um, their own noise mitigation to ensure that there would be no re reverse, sensitivity, sensitivity, reverse sensitivity from um, the use of those corridors. The panel has recommended the deletion of that overlay. Their view is that there wasn't really a good justification um, in the cost-benefit analysis of requiring people to undertake noise protection um, on private land was not justified. Uh, on balance, we've looked at the recommendations of the panel in their report and agree that perhaps there are other opportunities to look at alternative methods, um, particularly around the building code and associated re regulations that we've already talked about um, advocating to central government to, to um, improve, because it does get back to um, the noise attenuation within the products used to build buildings. Right, okay, and uh, so, uh, yes, just work through them. So the, the next one is C, because we've already dealt with B. That's to do with a policy that we had uh, which referred to, it was really to say to um, requiring authorities avoid designating the road corridor unless you had no other alternative um, options. And, and that was 
really to ensure that the road corridor was used for uh, the, the main purpose, which is transport. Uh, the, the panel did not think there were needed to be a policy within the plan to enable that to happen. They, they felt that under Section 171 of the Resource Management Act, which is the process within which a requiring authority must um, apply a designation to any piece of land was sufficient enough to test whether or not it was reasonable for um, a utility to place a designation on the road corridor. So they've recommended that we should, that um, the council should delete the policy framework and uh, we have looked at that and agree that 171 does provide those protection mechanisms to ensure that the road corridor doesn't have unnecessary or inappropriate designations on it. Uh, the third aspect there that we're recommending uh, that you accept the recommendations of the hearings panel is around the extent of the National Grid Corridor, um, which is de depicted in the National Grid Overlay, and I do recommend that you look at the, sort of the detailed uh, situation put in your agenda. But basically, um, we supported a National Grid Corridor as an overlay, which... Uh, provided uh, a 24 metre corridor, 12 metres either side of the centre line <coughs> of transmission lines, um, and we restricted activities within that corridor. The panel is recommending on top of that corridor, and uh, they've re renamed the corridor a yard, and they've then recommended a wider corridor, uh, and depends on the voltage of your transmission line, but it could be between 12 metres to 32 metres either side. Now, they've not in, in introduced any restrictions on activities within, existing activities within that, that wider corridor, but what they have introduced is restrictions on subdivisions. So when you go for a subdivision consent, you must consider the swing aspects of the, the corridor lines as part of how you orient, orientate your lots, etc., in substations. So, it so within that corridor, it becomes an additional assessment criteria for subdivision. So happy to answer any of those questions. All of those are ones that we are recommending you adopt. Okay, uh, Councillor Linda. Thank you. So with those, the National Grid Corridor, which is the, yep. the one that's running right up through West Auckland through Westgate. And so is that going to restrict some subdivision if there's available land under those? It's just going to be another criteria for it, so maybe height would be an issue <coughs> or? It will be an assessment um, criteria. And so it's not prohibitive. It's not prohibited, but when you were looking at how you arrange the sites and the subdivision, you would obviously not want to have sites where the only place you could build a house puts you within the... Yeah the corridor because that then would be restrictive for anybody buying that lot. So it's, it's asking subdividers to think carefully about how they arrange the orientation of their sites if they're in within the wider corridor. So that makes it more restrictive now with the wider corridor? It does cover a wider area of land than the council's position mm. at, um, at the here. I know, but it does restrict mm. a lot of subdivisions. Uh, okay, thank you. Understood. I think there's a recognition of the fact that what we were told over many years by Transpower about it not being a problem would reflect a slightly different reality. Having grown up under and in close proximity to a lot of power lines. A lot of young boys that have either died or have cancer under the <coughs> Councillor Denise. Yeah, no, I think we need to look into this further and depending on the mood of the room, maybe this is something that we can get more information on um, over the weekend. So in some places going from 24 metres to 74 metres is quite a jump. Yeah. Um, and in our own um, council arguments, um, Transpower isn't, as you've said, Penny, um, isn't seeking any land use controls in this extra area, so why is it necessary? Um, and it just seems um, a, an interesting creep here that we are just ticking the box when we didn't initially tick the box for Transpower, now we are. Um, so I think we should look into it. Some estimated 9,000 properties are affected 
Um, and by my estimation, um, the wards of Albany, Rodney, Waitakere, Howick, Franklin, Manukau, yep. Manurewa, Papakura. Um, it's a lot of houses. And what, what is the effect on... I'm just talking from an industrial land perspective. Yeah. We've got scarcity, <coughs> so the the potential sterilisation. I acknowledge that it's just looking at subdivision, um, but what is the economic impact for us um, for for what is looking like um, an unnecessary creep on Transpower's perspective? Um, you know, already under that 24 metre um, space, you've got. Um, um, restrictions on, on heights of buildings, the efficient site planning, amount of development <coughs> in, in general that's allowed to happen. So I think we should be looking into what are more of the implications should we um, carry on with this and that we get um, councillors a little bit more up to speed on uh, should we adopt both IHP <coughs> recommendations and now what's looking like staff recommendations as well. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to put it to a vote um, on the basis that um, most everyone's looking fairly sanguine about this. Um, would, would you actually like this to be a part of our discussions on Monday? Yes. Given yep. the yes. Yeah. weariness, is anyone vehemently opposed against that? Okay, make a note of that. Right, um, go to, um, is it B? <coughs> reject. Oh, I know. B, reject the recommendations of the independent hearing in relation to um, managing adverse effects of infrastructure. So in terms of, um, the panel is recommending that there is no objective at the district plan level about managing the adverse effects of infrastructure. Um, we think that objective is necessary because there are, there are objectives at the regional policy statement level, but they have not translated them down into uh, the district plan. It's a technical thing. It's not going to make any real difference, except that there is a gap at the district plan level for those kind of considerations. And then the, the, the last thing that, the, the next one that we're recommending rejecting, I don't know how long you want me to go, there's quite a number. Uh, I think just um, fire through the whole lot. Okay. The next one is that they've tagged the infrastructure objectives and policies as regional coastal plan provisions. <laughs> uh, this is another example where they've, they've just got the tagging wrong. None of those provisions apply in the regional coastal plan area, so they shouldn't be tagged there, and it's just going to confuse applicants if we have that tagging. So we're recommending that the, um, the tagging is removed because Auckland-wide infrastructure objectives and policies are not regional coastal plan provisions. Uh, the next one is that the panel has recommended that electric vehicle charging stations should be permitted activities in roads. Our position at the hearing was that they should be restricted discretionary activity, and that was really to ensure that there wasn't a proliferation of um, electrical vehicle charging stations in roads when they might actually be in competition for road space for other activities like cycling, pedestrians or busways. So what we are recommending is you reject the fact um, that they've provided them as a permitted activity in all roads and that uh, we put back in place that along our arterial roads, which is where you are encouraging public transport, cycling, pedestrians, that they would be a restricted discretionary activity. It's not to say they couldn't happen, but we just need to locate them in a way that doesn't compete with other road users. The next issue is that they have recommended deleting standards for the minor up infrastructure upgrading and the standards for activities and roads. This is fundamental to the day-to-day operation, -day operation of Auckland Transport in terms of being able to undertake minor infrastructure upgrades. Um, and we believe that um, if, if we do not actually provide these um, standards, to support permitted activities, there is no guidance to Auckland Transport about what they need to meet to be a permitted activity. 
So we're recommending that you do not support the fact that there were no standards for minor inf uh, infrastructure upgrading and roads. So they provided it as a permitted activity, but permitted activities have to have standards. So it's the, the lack of standards, which we think is a technical omission, that we need to be reinserting back into the plan. Uh, there is also a situation where they have not they have not provided in the activity table a default status where minor infrastructure upgrading does not meet a standard. And normally for other activities they have indicated if you are permitted activity that doesn't meet um, a standard that you then become a restricted discretionary or discretionary activity. Mm. We have not provided any guidance on that and so we think it's important for the day-to-day -day operation of the plan that a standard be, an activity standard be provided if you do not meet the upgrading standards. Sorry, I'm, this sounds very technical. Uh, the last one is very much a repeat of the issues that we've talked about with notified, sorry, notable trees, is that they have basically said that you can trim up to 20% of a live growth of a street tree or a tree within public open space um, where it could, uh, where it has a tree management plan. 